السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله داعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد It is reported in a hadith that was authenticated by Imam al-Zahabi and al-Hakim in his Mustadrak, he says, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam to the Muslims, لا تفتحن قسطنطينية فلا نعم الأمير أميرها ولا نعم الجيش ذلك الجيش that all Muslims, you shall conquer the city of Constantinia. And a blessed leader is the leader that conquers this city. And a blessed army is the army that conquers the city of Constantinople. We are continuing our lecture series with regards to the signs of the Day of Judgment. Sign number 52, from the signs of the Day of Judgment, that the Muslims shall conquer the city of Constantinople, the city of Istanbul, for the second time in their history. And this is one of the minor signs of the Day of Judgment, just before the coming of the Masih al-Dajjal. We say, before we talk about the second conquest of the Muslims of this city of Istanbul, of Constantinople, let us go back to the first conquest and how the Muslims, they tried for centuries to capture this city of Constantinople. And we began our lecture series yesterday looking at the history of the Ottoman Empire, a history of Muslims who occupied and ruled 600 years of our history. We looked at Suleiman Shah, and then his son Ertugul, then his son thereafter Uthman, then Urkhan, then Murad the first, and we reached Bayezid al-Sa'iqa. We mentioned yesterday, Khanifillah, that this Bayezid, he was known as the Sultan of the Roman Empire. This man defeated Europeans, any army the Europeans were sending to him, he was defeating them. And he defeated a great army of Europeans in the Battle of Nicopolis, which was about the year 800 of the Hijri calendar. So after he defeated the Crusaders in the Battle of Nicopolis, he says, ah, that hadith of the Prophet والسلام, where the Prophet والسلام, gave glad tidings to the person who conquers the city of Constantinople. He says, alayhi salatu wassalam, la taftahunna Constantinia, fala ni'ma al-amir amiruha, wa la ni'ma al-jaysh dhalika al-jaysh. O Muslims, you shall conquer the captured city of the Eastern Roman Empire, the city of Constantinople. A blessed army is the army that conquers that city, and a blessed leader is the leader that conquers that city. So he said, perhaps I am that leader that was mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He set out to conquer that city of Constantinople. So he comes and he besieges the city of Constantinople. And the entire of Europe is waiting for the deadly news that the city they held in Stalingrad, in Christendom, in Roman history, for all their history, the his city that is fit to be the capital city of the world is going to be captured by the enemies of the Christians, the Muslim Empire is going to capture it. So the whole of Europe were waiting for this news. Bayezid himself was waiting for him to be part of the glad tidings that was mentioned by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this hadith that has been authenticated by some of the scholars. However, we plan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. Great musibah that the Sultan did not expect came from the East. The Mongolian we spoke of previously, Timur Lang. He comes with an army of 800,000 soldiers. And this man has had issues with Bayezid. They have been sending letters insulting each other. So Bayezid is informed that Timur Lang the man who has conquered most of Asia, most of Russia, the one So he hears that this man has entered the lands of Anatolia, the lands of Turkey, he has come to fight Bayezid. So Bayezid leaves the city of Constantinople. To meet this man in Ankara, which is the city of, of Turkey. And the great battle of between Timur Lank, the Shia, versus this man, Bayezid, the Sultan of the Muslims, the Sultan of the Roman Empire. So they fight a great battle in Ankara, and the Sultan is defeated, Bayezid, and is captured in battle. And he's taken to captivity by Timur Lank. When this news reaches Europe, 
they drink for days, they have parties for days, they dance for days, for the greatest catastrophe Europe had seen for centuries was taken care of by a Muslim. Europeans were afraid of this man, that this man will come and take over the city of Rome from them. So they were so happy, they sent gifts. The leader of France, of England, of Castile, of, uh, of uh, Serbia, all these countries, they sent gifts to Temur Lang, congratulating him that you have assisted the, the lands of Europe, you have assisted Christian Europe from becoming a Muslim continent. So Bayezid was captured. 803 of the Hijri calendar. And Rahimahullah, after two years, he passed away. So this empire of the Ottoman Empire, it looked like it was going to collapse. His sons, he had five sons left. Mustafa was lost, no one knows where he went. His other sons, Suleiman, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad. Musa was captured by his, with, with Timur Lang, by, in his father's army. So these three brothers remained. When they heard the father had died, Suleiman, he went to the city of Adarna and he said, I'm the leader of the Muslims. This other brother is called, uh, is called who? Isa. He went to another city, it's called Bursa. And he says, I'm the leader of the Muslims. This third brother, Muhammad, he goes to another city, it's called Almasi, and he says, I am the leader of the Muslims. So three brothers all claim the throne of the Ottoman Empire at the time. And that great fight ensues amongst brothers. And this is an unfortunate thing that happens a lot in our histories. The same family members, people of the same blood, they fight because of a chair. They fight because And they need to kill their brothers, their brothers' families, just because of a throne. This is something that has happened a lot in our history, and it's very unfortunate. So these three brothers, they started fighting. From the year 806 to the year 816 of the Hijri calendar, there was a fight amongst the Muslims and everyone expected that this, uh, this Ottoman Empire is going to collapse completely. But out of the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad, who was the youngest of the three, the son of Bayezid, he became the most powerful leader and he defeated his brothers. Ah, and their brothers, they died in the civil war that occurred in those 10 years. So from the year 816 of the Hijri calendar to the year 824 of the Hijri calendar, the Muslims were led in this area of the world by this man called Muhammad, the son of Bayezid, also known as Muhammad Jalabi, also known as Buhlul, one of the greats of Islamic history. He is known as the second founder of the Ottoman Empire. If it was not for him and his wisdom, the Ottoman Empire would have been lost for entire history. The first founder is Uthman. And the second founder is this man, Muhammad, the son of, of Bayezid. So he started leading the Muslims. As he's leading the Muslims, a great fitna occurs also in the lands of the Ottoman Empire. An evil man pretending to be a scholar, he calls himself Sheikh Badruddin Ibn Isra Badruddin Muhammad Ibn Israel. That's his name. He calls himself Sheikh. And he starts a da'wah calling people to his evil way. He tells the people, there's nothing about difference of religions. We are the same. All of us come from Allah. We are from Allah. All of us, our religion is one. We should not have any disagreements amongst us because we have different beliefs. So he starts this da'wah. And people follow this evil man. And he causes a rebellion in the lands of the Muslims in, in Turkey. And he leads the first. And he defeats the army of Muhammad the first. And a great fitna ensues. Muhammad asks him, says, how am I going to deal with, deal with this man? He tries every way, but his generals are killed one after the other by this fake sheikh, this evil sheikh who is, who is giving a da'wah of uh, like the Freemasons, basically. He was giving a da'wah of the Freemasons at the time in Turkey. However, Muhammad, out of intelligence, he sent intelligence services and they managed to capture this man after playing some tricks with him and they bring him to the court of law and the scholars debate with him and they execute him and the fitna of this man ends. So Muhammad Jalabi continues to lead the lands of the Muslims until the year 824 of the Hijri calendar. When he notices he was the age of 43 at the time, he feels like death is coming unto him. He feels that my time on this earth is about to end. So he says, please call my son to come and give him the, rule, the rulership of the land of the Muslims after me. And if he does not come before I die, 
please do not tell any of the Muslims that I have died. I went to my own brothers. I do not want my son to fight his brothers also. Please hide my death. And he died, rahimahullah. And the two ministers at the time, Ibrahim and Badruddin Basha, they hid that the, the Sultan of the Muslims at the time had passed away. 41 days passed and the people have been told, ah, the Sultan is unwell, he is in his bedroom, he cannot see you. 41 days he was not buried, Yuhanifillah, until his son Murad II came and he took over the leadership of the Muslims in this land of Anatolia. So he started leading the Muslims from the year 824 of the Hijri calendar to the year 855 of the Hijri calendar. And subhanAllah, it was a blessed period of our lives, a blessed period of our history as Muslims. So he started spreading the Islam to the lands of the Balkans, the lands of Serbia, Bosnia, Albania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, all these countries that are in the Balkan region of Europe, he started spreading Islam to these lands. The Europeans, of course, were not happy with this. When he captured Albania, they gathered a great army to fight this menace as they felt. The Sultan of the Roman Empire, the Sultan of the Muslims, Murad II. So they gathered a great army and they managed to defeat Murad II. But it wasn't a conclusive defeat. So they made a peace agreement. Murad II made a peace agreement with the Europeans that for 10 years, Hudna, there shall be peace amongst us. We shall not fight. This is what Islam requires for us. We should make peace with our enemies when we see it has maslah for the Muslims. And the maximum period allowed for us to do so, as the fuqaha say, is 10 years. So he made an agreement of 10 years. He signed the agreement and he left the Europeans and went back to Turkey. He went back to Turkey and he's told his firstborn son, Allah has passed away. He got heartbroken, rahimahullah. My son, my firstborn son has gone. Let me go and do ibadah. Let me leave my other son who's only 14 years, Muhammad, to be the leader of the Muslims. So he kept his other son, Muhammad, who is going to be the person, the hero of our story we're going to talk about in the next lecture. He leaves him to be the leader of the Muslims in this area of Anadol, this area of Anatolia. And he's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Europeans, they see this, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, in the history of Allah, the Europeans never, ever, ever keep a peace agreement they have signed with them. At the time, they always break the peace agreement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran, لا إيمان لهم لا يقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة They never keep any agreement that they have with the Muslims. So, or if I've wrong the spelling, it's an Italian name. You have made a mistake to sign this peace agreement with the Ottomans. You have made a mistake. The Pope, who is the representative of the Messiah, Jesus on earth, did not agree to this agreement. We have to break this agreement. So they broke the agreement. They gathered a bunch of them to come fight the Muslims and destroy the Ottoman Empire for all of eternity. And they came to a place called Bulgaria, a place called Varna, with an army of hundreds of thousands over 100,000 to fight the Muslims. When the Muslims, they gathered to fight them, they ran to the Sultan. And they told the Sultan, your son is only 14, 15 years of age, and this threat is really severe. Come and assist the Muslims to take care of this threat that the Europeans are bringing to our lands. So Sultan he loves and even greater worship defend of the lands of the Muslims, defend the honor of the Muslims, to defend the women of the Muslims. And he came and he met the Europeans in the Battle of Varna in the year about 650, about 852, the year 852 of the Hijri calendar, if I'm not wrong. And they fought a great battle in Khalifillah, and the Muslims won a great victory that should be written in gold ink, a victory that is remembered for ages. They defeated the Europeans, a thorough defeat, so much so that Hungary was not able to bring an army for the next 10 years plus to fight the Muslims again. After he defeated him, he defeated Islamic history in 
in world history. He said, I have done my duty. I have defeated the enemies of Islam. The lands of the Muslims are safe. I leave my chair again. My son, to be the leader of the Muslims, I go back to worship. He left his chair home in time, subhanAllah. Not once, he left it twice. This is something unheard of in history. A person left this chair and he says, I left this chair, this throne, twice. He left it and he goes back to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One year passes, another civil war occurs in the land of the Ottomans. In Christian children who were brought up as Muslims, trained well in Arabic language, in Turkish language, in Persian language, fighting all types of weapons. This people, the army of the Inkashareen or the special unit of the Inkashareen. who was in worship of Allah. At that time, the leader of the Muslims, and he fights the civil war, and he defeats them. Thereafter, Rahimahullah, he passes in the year 855 of the Hijri calendar, and he leaves his son, Muhammad, to be the leader of the Muslims. And this Muhammad Khanifillah is one of the greats of Islamic history. A man that we Muslims love sincerely, we love dearly, because he is the one that conquered the city of Constantinople, the city that was the capital city of Byzantine. That city from that day on was known as the city of Islam, the city of Istanbul, currently pronounced as Istanbul. We shall look in the next lecture, Khanifillah, at this hero of Islamic history, Muhammad al-Fatih, Muhammad, the son of Murad the second, the son of Muhammad, the son of Bayezid, the son of Murad the first, the son of Urkhan, the son of Uthman, the son of Urtughul, the son of Sulaiman Shah. This is what we shall look forth in the forthcoming lecture. Wallahu alam, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.